Hi and welcome to another episode of Wonders of Chemistry with Mickey G. In this episode, I will be discussing the concept of enantiomers, also known as optical isomers. Such molecules are non-superimposable and are often said to exhibit a property known as handedness after our non-superimposable mirror images of our left and right hands. Here is a simple example of such a molecule. It is clear to see that the central carbon atom depicted in grey is surrounded by four different substituents coloured in red, green, blue and yellow. Based on this, it is designated a chiral carbon. Such molecules possess a mirror image and exist as mirror images of one another. These isomers are labeled L and D based on their ability to rotate plain polarized light either to the left in an anti-clockwise direction or to the right in a clockwise direction. While it may be obvious to some of you that the L stands for left, in fact left turning, which in Latin stands for levo rotary. The D, on the other hand, may not be so obvious. In fact, the D stands for dextro rotary, which in Latin means right turning. In fact, this is the reason why glucose is often labeled as dextrose, as it represents the optical isomer which rotates plain polarized light to the right and is therefore designated as D glucose. Now, if we look at these two molecules that are illustrated here, they look pretty much exactly the same. However, there is a major difference. If I was to rotate this molecule to the right and attempt to superimpose the first molecule over the second molecule, you can see that they're actually non-superimposable. So what's the big thing with these molecules and why are they important? Well, within our body, we have receptors that generally only recognize only one of these isomers, just like our left hand can only fit into a left-handed glove. A left-handed optical isomer requires a matching receptor that complements its geometry. Let's take an example of a receptor that only recognizes the L isomer. Its geometrical orientation allows it to sit perfectly within its receptor site. Now let's take the same receptor and attempt the same scenario with the D isomer. You will quickly see that the geometrical orientation of the D isomer does not match the geometrical orientation of the receptor binding site. While the blue region of the molecule is in perfect alignment with the blue binding site, the yellow and green regions are misaligned. This prevents the molecule from binding to the receptor binding site and it's subsequently rejected. Now you can rotate this molecule as much as you like but what you'll find is that it's physically impossible to get each of its regions to bind perfectly in alignment with the receptor binding site. In fact, this is the reason why the L isomer of amino acids are preferred over the D isomer in the human metabolism, as there exists an overabundance of its corresponding L receptors. When it comes to monosaccharides, however, the opposite is true, with the D isomer being preferred over the L version. Once again, this is due to an overabundance of its corresponding D receptor. The key word here being preferred. While it would be nice to think that only the one receptor type exists within the body, there are instances when both can exist and have led to catastrophic consequences. A classic example of such a scenario occurred during the 50s and early 60s with the drug thalidomide, which was marketed as a safe and mild sedative to reduce morning sickness in pregnant women. However, it caused thousands of babies worldwide to be born with malformed limbs. Scientists speculated that one of the optical isomers of the drug was acting as a teratogen, 
preventing the proper growth of limbs. While living organisms have the necessary machinery to create only one optical isomer, the pharmaceutical industry tends to produce a mixture of both L and D based versions of a drug. And here lies the problem. While the right handed version of the drug thalidomide was relatively safe, its mirror image, the left handed version, was not. Since then, drug companies have invested billions of dollars in research to develop ways to enhance the purity of the intended optical isomer of a drug, limiting any potential side effects from its mirror image. Unfortunately, about more than half of the drugs currently in use are chiral compounds. That is to say, they are a mixture of both the L and D isomers of the drug with almost 90% consisting of equal concentrations of both enantiomers.